Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Have you ever considered how powerful a flower can be? A few weeks back, I was travelling on a major road and noticed bunches of roses on the side of the road and a sale sign. I'm sure there were similar scenes on several roads around the city. The reason? It was Valentine's Day. And I'm sure florists were very busy that day. They were busy because thousands of people were using flower power. They were giving flowers to people they loved. And in many cases, those flowers were so powerful, they melted hearts, lifted spirits, and filled someone's life with joy. On Valentine's Day, millions of very powerful flowers were given to people around the world. Flowers aren't only powerful on Valentine's Day. They can be given on any day of the year to melt hearts, lift spirits, and bring joy. Of course, we all know it isn't the flower itself that has the power, don't we? It's what is behind the flower that's so powerful. And behind the giving of the flower is a person who has love for the one they are giving the flower to. The flower is a, a physical symbol of love, and it carries that love into the other person's heart. The real power behind the flower is the love of the one who's giving it. The flower is powerful because it is a symbol of a relationship between the giver and the receiver. And for days after the flower has been given, the person who's received it can look at it and be reminded of the giver's love. The giver may not even be there. They may be on a business trip or they may live interstate. But each time the one who received the flower wants to be reminded of the giver's love, all they need do is look at the flower. God gave us more than a flower. God gave us his son. God gave you his one and only son lifted up on a cross. And God's son on the cross is the most powerful thing in the universe. Yes, it might look like weakness and it might look like defeat. It looks ugly and painful. After the cross, after all, the, the cross was an instrument of torture and death reserved only for the worst of criminals. To many, Jesus on a cross looks pretty powerless. It looks like God has lost. And yet, the Son of God on the cross is God's gift of love to us. God so loved the world that he gave far more than just a flower. He gave his only Son. What is interesting about flowers is that the power they wield depends on how much you trust the motive behind the giving. If you believe that the person is giving you the flower purely out of their love for you, it's powerful. But sometimes when a person receives flowers, their hearts don't melt, their spirits aren't lifted, and they're certainly not filled with joy. Instead, they're filled with suspicion because they don't trust the giver. Instead of saying thank you, their immediate response might be something like, so what have you done wrong now? They regard the flower perhaps as a guilt offering or a peace offering or even as some form of manipulation. They might even become angry at the giver. They might throw the flowers away. If you don't trust the person giving you the flowers, then instead of the flowers strengthening the relationship, they may actually make it worse. If you look at the Son of God on the cross and don't believe that this is God demonstrating his love for you, then your heart won't be warmed by God's love. Your spirit won't be lifted by God's love, and you will not be filled with joy by the gift that God has given you. If you don't believe then the loving relationship God wants with you cannot be established. And where the loving relationship is absent, all the benefits of that relationship are also absent. 
if you look at the cross and don't believe that it's a symbol, an expression, and an expression of God's love for you, then God's gift has no power in your life. Jesus puts it this way. Whoever does not believe stands condemned. On the other hand, if you believe that God the Son died for you because of his love for you, if you believe that the same love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross is the love that God the Father has for you, then you will experience the power of that love in your life. So what we're really saying is that trust is a key part of any relationship. This holds true for human relationships and it holds true for God's relationship with us. God wants us to trust that he loves us, that he keeps his promises and always has our best interests at heart. If we trust God, then our relationship with God is secure. This is reinforced many times in the scriptures. In Genesis, we read, God believed, uh, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. The Apostle Paul says, to the one who does not work but trusts God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. John says, to those who believe in Jesus, he means, or in Jesus' name, God has given the right to become the children of God. And Jesus says, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. When you have a loving relationship, loving human relationship based on trust, each person in the relationship naturally gives gifts to the other. They care for each other. They support each other. They spend time with each other. In multiple ways, they enrich in each other's lives. Similarly, when you have a relationship with God based on trust, God gives you gifts. These gifts include a continual outpouring of love, grace, and forgiveness. The gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of adoption as a child of God, a heavenly father who's always on your side, a brother and a friend who is always with you, life to the full, peace, salvation, eternal life, and so on. And in turn, you love God. Because by your faith, you experience that God loves you and that changes you. And so filled with God's love, you become the physical presence of his love on earth. You become the arms of Christ, wide open and ready to embrace all people with the love of God. This is the life that flows out of faith, faith in the one who hung on the cross. This is a life that becomes God's little gift of love to the world, doing the good works that he has prepared for us to do. And through these good works, we always point to the most significant gift of all, the Son of God lifted up for the whole world to receive life eternal. Amen.